Kind of did a weird little butt waddle. Hey, welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where a man thinks about what he's done. I've recently been told by my therapist, I don't have a therapist, I'm working on it, but I feel like I need a therapist to coach me through how to find a therapist because it's really difficult and then I get discouraged from trying to just kind of stop. But imagine that I have a therapist. They recently told me that I should probably do a little bit of self-reflection about all the things that I've done. So I'm going to sit here and watch all the TikToks that I've created and uh, react to them and see if it stirs up any weird emotions. Boy, I bet it will. Let's get to it. Spicy. Yeah, notice, Spicy notice the man. dumb grin on the face, just tearing into it like a caveman. Yeah, uh, I remember doing this. Eating it, yeah, kind of look wild-eyed and insane, stabbing the dude wipes. He tries to eat a dude wipe, he realizes, oh, that's not food, you stupid idiot. You big old troglodyte dum-dum. So what this actually is, this is a commentary on toxic masculinity and the way that uh, our advertising in the world sort of fails us as men by reducing us down to idiot caricatures, which I'm portraying right here, right? We got man witch. Hey, you big hungry man. This is just a can of corn syrup, tomato paste, and spices. But you're a big man, aren't you? You got a big old swinging uh, we have Hungry Man, same thing, even as the deep voice guy, Hungry Man, in the commercials. Uh, then you got Dude Wipes. Here, here's a fun fact, Dude Wipes have always exist. They were just called Baby Wipes, but no big ol', big ol' scary dude. I can start a fight club if I wanted to, wants to use a baby wipe. I ain't no baby. That's what I was trying to portray here in trying to use the sort of physicality of the character. He's stupid, he's in an apron, he ain't even got no shirt on. To sort of really exemplify that and reify it and drive it home. Also, the slop that we made, it was pretty good. All the flavors work together. Hey, um, excuse me, uh, Dubstep remix of the time Guy Fieri reached enlightenment while eating a good song. Of tater tots. So you're telling me that if attachment's the root of all suffering, we are bound not necessarily by earthly morals, but simply by spiritual necessity to abandon all corporeal desire? Man, those tater tots are good. There's the thing, uh, I am an adult man who listens to a lot of EDM and still goes to shows. Recently, a mythical beast plurred me up, you know, he did the old like peace, love, unity, respect, and gave me his candy. So that was really rad. Shout out, I forgot your name, but, but you're really cool. So that was where the musicality came from. This was actually originally supposed to be a longer video where the whole joke was that just everybody who uh, our director, Aton, shout out Aton, was approaching and said they were listening to random Guy Fieri sounds. But then we decided that, hey, let's just go with Guy Fieri reaching enlightenment while eating a trash can lid full of tater tots, comma, the dubstep remix. What's hilarious is that I said to Aton, who has a real film degree, great job using it. I said, hey, can you make a dubstep remix of Guy Fieri reaching enlightenment while eating a trash can lid full of tater tots? And he said, I don't know, let's find out. And turns out uh, he sure could. And that was pretty fun for me. I think this track is great. I love this video. Can we play it one more time? I want to hear what I say, because I, I wrote this script. Uh, dubstep remix of the time Guy Fieri reached enlightenment while eating a trash can lid full of tater tots. So you're telling me that if attachments the root of all suffering, we are bound not necessarily by earthly morals, but simply by spiritual necessity to abandon all corporeal desire? Man, yeah, all right, cut it. Yeah, so attachment is the root of all suffering. That's kind of like the root of all Zen Buddhism, right? Uh, what did it say? We're not bound by, oh, any sort of morality. If attachment's the root of all suffering, then attaching yourself to any sort of morality is also foolhardy because then you're simply attaching yourself. Uh, but I'm saying it is spiritual necessity, which just means like it's, it's a given. You will die, you will shed your mortal coil, the world goes black. It is simply a spiritual necessity uh, to abandon all corporeal desire because it's going to be ripped away from you one day, whether you like it or not. But then he says, man, those tater tots were good because he's eating a trash can lid full of tater tots. And then the drop. <laughs> this video is the perfect encapsulation of how my brain works. <laughs> Fudge, man. All right, we got all these extra cheese balls and we're gonna prank Josh. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> this is a classic. What the f are you f***ing kidding me? I was gonna f***ing give the bell the meeting with a VP at Netflix. You think his job is a joke? You come here and throw cheese balls at me? Do you realize how tough a Q4 we've had? Do you realize the retention rates down? Churn rates, rates up. up. Do you know the last time somebody bought a f***ing apron from us? April. April. Honey, he's not even on the f***ing meeting anymore. We just lost, lost the account. account. We tried to fire you five months ago. Your dad called up and said that you were crying. I'll let you in on a little secret. This was scripted. Well, it wasn't scripted. This was obviously planned. It's a video. Anytime you see one of these videos, it's planned. You know how you know that? Because somebody decided to make a video. Duh. All these pranks where it's like, I approached a bodybuilder and tried to steal his girlfriend that has 95 million views on Facebook and people are like, that was super crazy. That's all planned, you idiots. Jesus Christ. 
Step one, waffle it. Beautiful, you know it's ready when the nacho cheese starts seeping out. You just grab it out of there with your bare hands. Oh, come on. This, uh, here, I'll tell you what, this video starts with a very simple premise. <clears throat> What happens if you put Taco Bell in a waffle maker? <laughs> and as we see, it it uh, it compresses it into the shape of what what some might call a waffle. And then I eat it. I seem pleased. I apparently was still wearing backwards hats back then. That's a fun time. Also, this is when just in the throes of the pandemic, and I was just I mean having a panic attack about every single day. Um, and the only thing that brought me out of it was like, God, maybe we can make some content. We just launched the TikTok and I was at home and I was just like, what, what can, what can I do? I feel, I feel trapped. I feel trapped in my body, right? No one knew even the effects of COVID back then. It was just like, is this, is this gonna kill me? I just read a story about a 28 year old nurse dying for Christ's sake. Uh, is this gonna get me? And um, yeah, so the, I mean, the only thing you can do is, you know, make content through it sometimes. So I put a crunch wrap in a waffle maker as a response to the existential terror of a pandemic. Oh, Maybe this one. Five thousand and ten thousand dollars yeah. of passive income every month. It's so passive easy. It's income, like baby. Money. Let me show you how. First, you grind have to set. That's this what's is up. Fifteen cent business uh -huh. expense, but once you get up to scale and reach peak top line growth, you'll have so much liquidity. You, you won't know what to do with it, man. All you have to do is listen carefully. Slice the potato into coins. Get them in oil. Yeah. You super passively dust them with salt. You probably burn those potato chips so bad. This is a process that I invented called transformative commodification, using minimal labor expenditure for maximal fiscal output. Now that you have your brand new product, there's a one-time sunk cost for packaging and marketing. And now your product ready. To hit market, set up shop, establish your customer base, and passive income yeah. starts rolling in. You'll be running this town like John Gotti. This is the won. best acting I've ever done. Thirty thousand dollars on my dad's credit card for this. I own land in Idaho yeah. now. I'm not dripping that ice. I'm dripping potatoes. I drooled a lot out by the train tracks for that one. So what this here was. This is inspired by another video that I saw where somebody in complete seriousness was like, this is the best way to make passive income between 5K and 10K per month. And they literally described the process of creating an entire clothing brand. They're like, all you're gonna have to do is go on Vistaprint and then you just like create a super simple logo. And then you like put that logo on the clothes, like something just like looks kind of cool. And then you take those clothes and you just like put them in like a Shopify account. And then you set up your store and now you have your store and now you have passive. It's like, that's just called a clothing brand. People used to put their entire life into that. They're like, this is my dream to be a designer. and One day I can do this. And you're saying you can just click on Vistaprint? So this right here goes through the entire process of creating a small batch potato chip company and insisting that it's passive? You absolute charlatans out there telling people, oh, you get mailbox money, get on your grind set, invest in crypto. How's that working out for you? You're bored apes bored yet? So anyways, that's what that was. Yeah. Okay, this is good. Yeah. Go ahead and put the ranch away. <laughs> yeah, so short, pretty short and sweet video right here. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I appear to be what I believe is called a lich. It's a sort of demon creature, but this one is in jorts and pretty naked and covered in ranch and is eating ranch with his hands. There was a TikTok sound where it was uh, somebody putting too much ranch on a chicken wing and they said, put the ranch away. And so oh, whatever, whatever we see a concept, we're like, how can we take this to the utmost extreme? Um, then also previously mentioned, our director Aton does have a film degree. And I was like, Aton, I'm, I'm thinking we go kind of found footage horror right here. It's not the genre that I love the most, but I think we can really create something special. I mean, look at the lighting, look at the cinematography. You know, I mean, to me, this is a complete video. And I think we can spin off maybe five or six full length movies from this character that we've created, right? Ranch Demon, we can get it sponsored by Hidden Valley. You know, I'm just saying, think about it. Think about it. Kind of did a weird little butt waddle. <laughs> People have been asking, so I'm going to show you everything I eat in a day. Yeah. I work out every morning Here before we go. work, and I strongly believe in the power of carbs. I do carbs, believe in the power so of carbs. I like carbs. to start out with a big bowl of sugary cereal, uh -huh. and today we're doing Fruit Loops. I try to eat every two to three hours, and we really we're desperately do do in need of protein and fruit right now. So Greek yogurt, great source Greek of protein. Yogurt, some strawberries and granola. You now gotta get some of the Parmesan. At work, so I just reach for whatever foods around me. Mm -hmm. Today we're slamming some ramen with a hefty splash of hot sauce. You gotta at eat when you gotta today, eat. I'm generally trying to eat as much carbs, fat, protein, and fiber as possible. Yeah. And Chipotle is a great way to get that in. Burrito bowl. Yeah. Rice, I don't. I'm not like bulking, beans, but I'm what's called main gaining right now. Salsa and guac. We're getting into the evening, and it's finally protein shake time. Oh, Here we I got 40 grams of chocolate right milk flavored whey, blended up with a cup yeah. of blueberries and a spoonful of peanut butter. All right, now everyone needs a dank late night snack, and I'm a sucker. Uh, Air does salsa verde. verde. It comes up verde. all the time. And that's everything I eat in a day. So what had happened with this one? We 
got a giant Parmesan wheel. Actually, we got half of a Parmesan wheel, which turns out you can't buy. We spent several hundred dollars on it. We used that for a video with our dear Mindy. We made we made a fancy Jollibee spaghetti and served it in that bowl. You know, we have a budget, we have food expenses. We're like, we've never used a whole Parmesan wheel. Let's do it. We made a really fantastic, fancy version of Filipino spaghetti with like ground mangalitsa ham. Ah, absolutely delicious. We were like, yo, we still got just half a bowl. We can simply clean this out, carve out the dirty sides of the cheese and use it for more stuff. Then we made a delicious cacio e pepe pasta in that same Parmesan bowl. And we're like, cool, we're getting some more content out of this. It's really fun to do. And then finally we were like, you know, we gave away as much cheese as we possibly could. How much cheese do you think we can give away? And so we were like, hey, here's an idea, man. We're just gonna, we're just gonna rage bait and we're gonna put Fruit Loops in a Parmesan wheel. And we're gonna insist that everything I eat in a day is out of a Parmesan wheel. And um, this is our most successful TikTok to date. Also, this is pretty accurate to what I eat in a day. This is more when I was like bulking, I'm, I'm lifting heavy. I'm trying to really uh, get that central nervous system peaking, you know, I think carbs are really important to that. You get that little insulin response, you know, for protein synthesis. We also thought it'd be funnier if we didn't clean the bowl in between meals. And again, the amount of people that thought this was real, unnerving. Welcome to America's favorite game show, Cake oh, okay. I'm your host, Trevor Evans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know, hey. man, I don't know, listen. I guess that's why they call it Cake Slap. Cake Slap. You know, I- I'm your host Trevor Everts and this has been Cake Slap! I can't stress enough that we're all just people here trying to do our best, trying to figure out what we want from the strange little niche and world and career we've carved out, trying to figure out what you want from us for the strange little niche and career that we've carved out in the world. And, and, and with all that in mind, we end up with Cake Slap, America's favorite game show hosted by Trevor Everts, whereby he slaps me in the face with cake. And you know, we just, we had a cake laying around. We're like, what can we do with it? And we're like, Trevor, hit me. Trevor, I want you to hit me as hard as you can with that cake, you know? And I think this is a metaphor for sometimes making content, especially TikToks as a 30 year old man, you know, within a larger corporation, sometimes it feels like just, you know, smashing your face against a rock hard cake. That cake was rock hard. Don't know why, it was like straight out the fridge, it was just a rock hard cake. And that's really a grander metaphor for, for all of this. Sometimes you just gotta shotgun method things and see if that's what you people want. As we've learned, you don't wanna watch me get hit in the face with cake by Trevor. You do want to watch me talk about which Pokemon I'd like to cook. You don't wanna watch me be a ranch monster. You do want to watch me slurp Fruit Loops out of a Parmesan wheel. And so gradually, we're all learning from each other. I hope you've learned a lot about yourself. Uh, I've certainly learned a lot about me today and that I am such a narcissist that I could just watch videos of myself for hours. When we turn the camera off here, I'm just gonna keep watching TikTok sitting on the counter. I don't know if you can tell, I'm just kind of sitting on a counter right now. A bunch of Apple boxes under my feet. This is a weird, could have put me in like a chair anywhere and we didn't. We just threw me on the counter where we cook. Um, yeah, if you wanna see more videos like this, I don't know, keep it to yourself. Thanks so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcast. Hit us up on Instagram and oh, TikTok at Mythical Kitchen with pictures of your mythical dishes, I guess, under hashtag dreams become food. We'll see y'all next time. The Mythical Kitchen's favorite way to obliterate garlic immortalized in t-shirt form. Get the Palm Hill Strike tea now at mythical.com.